We have a clicker. I have three clickers. Okay, so Dennis and I are going to play this game. Let's just use one because I can only count to six. All right, so when I'm done, those of you that have dice are going to play this game. Those of you that have toilet paper rolls are going to watch. I'm going to be even and you're going to be odd. So I'm going to throw this down and that's even. So I click and you have to watch to make sure I'm not clicking with a little bit too much enthusiasm. That means I pick it up and throw again. If it happens to be odd, you click and you pick it up and throw. So I, I operate on even and odd. you operate on odd. That's normal for me. <laughs> Good. Now you want to throw it down again? Oops, see, I made a mistake. I was too quick on the draw, all right? And that's why we're doing this, so we don't make mistakes with the dogs and the chickens, so that we can, you know, get our chops up, all right? That one's mine. Just like anything else, if your dog has something to do, he's going to learn to learn. He's going to develop his brain. He's going to be able to do other things. You're developing a re relationship with the dog. You're enriching the dog. This one is, you're going to put a piece of food in there. And your dog sniff, 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 sniff. And I don't know if he's going to do it with his nose or if he's going to do it with his foot, but we want him to figure out how to get the food out. Okay? Pardon? You can click if you want to. But actually, he's rewarding himself because the primary reward is the food. And when he gets the food, he's going to figure out how to do it again to get the food. If you would like to click, by all means click. If you'd like to say yes, say yes. And it wouldn't be bad for your timing to do that, to work on your timing. But the fact is, he's going to get the reward exactly when he needs it because he's going to be able to get his nose in and eat it so that the timing of his getting the primary reward is going to be pretty much perfect. Yeah. Boom. She's working on it. You could get it that way. But we won't let you. Come when called is tricky. I would never uh, trust my dog's life to my ability as a dog trainer. That's what collars and leashes are for and fences and so on. So nobody ever leaves Legacy thinking that they have 100% come when called cue because it's impossible. You never know what layer of triggers are going to get together and say this is the time that I'm going to just forget and run. The dog might come nicely in your living room, but now you're on the beach. He might come nicely on the beach, but now there's a seagull. He might come nicely on the beach with a seagull, but now the seagull is flapping its wings. He might be able to come away from a seagull on the beach that's flapping its wings, but if he's gone in the opposite direction, you maybe have lost your dog. So you never know what's going to happen. You can say, he's come when called all nine years of his life. I trust him. At nine years and one day, he could be dead because of that. So I hate to start out like a crepe hanger and be uh, negative. So let's turn into positive. So how do we up the chances that the dog is going to come when called? We put a lot of money, a lot of oomph into our bank account, our come when called bank account. It's like a savings account. You keep putting in, putting in, putting in, and then someday at the end of the line, um, you're going to be able to reap all that interest. So let's do a little exercise called the boomerang recall.
I just wanted to show you some of the things that you can do that is, can be fun for the people and can be educational for the dog and non-intrusive and the dog has to think about what he's doing.